uh, welcome one and all for the webinar from asset uh, abita university haryana as you are aware auh is known as research and innovation driven university the birthday of honorable chancellor dr asim chauhan on 28 september 2020 is celebrated in the campus as innovation day every year one week prior to the celebration of innovation day many activities of research and innovation were conducted and displayed this year also amidst the pandemic of covid 19 euh is organizing webinars from renowned resource persons and carrying out the research and innovation activities the present webinar is one of the series being conducted by amity school of engineering and technology under the banner of amity university haryana we thank the honorable chancellor vice chancellor and pro vice chancellor for their motivation support and guidance for carrying out these activities i wholeheartedly welcome today's speaker professor ajay k mishra from university of south africa for this event rashi for you now thank you sir for giving the opening remarks on the eve of the celebration of innovation week 2020 so i would like to introduce uh, dr ajay kumar mishra to one and all uh, Uh, Ajay Kumar Mishra is a professor at the Institute of Nanotechnology and Water Sustainability at College of Science, Engineering and Technology, University of South Africa, Florida. Professor Mishra recently has been recognized as fellow member and also chartered scientist at Royal Royal Society of Chemistry, UK. He received his B.Sc., M.Sc. degrees in 1997 and 2001, respectively, from Purvanchal University, Jaunpur, India, and M.Phil and Ph.D. degrees in 2003 and 2007, respectively, from the University of Delhi, India. Professor A.K. Mishra's research interest involves in the broader areas of nanoscience, nanotechnology, material science, polymers, composite nanocomposites, and water research. Professor Mishra successfully developed smart bio nanocomposites for organic dye remediation in his water research commission project, which involved a visible light-driven photocatalyst based on the rare earth metal, and the same has been tested in the various textile industries within South Africa. He has authored over 150 scientific papers in peer-reviewed international journals, 61 book chapters, and 29 edited books. Professor Mishra has supervised and graduated nine PhDs, 20 masters, and 12 postdoctoral fellows, and 15 PhDs, two masters, and one postdoc are already working under his supervision. He has more than 83 plenary keynote invited lectures and has also attended more than 150 international national conference workshop and symposium. He is serving as a member advisory board of a number of international scientific societies, conferences and workshops. Uh, now I would like to request uh, now I would like to request Dr. Ajay Kumar Mishra to kindly please uh, proceed with the guest lecture on the applications of uh, organic and inorganic hybrid materials. Over to you, sir. Welcome, sir. Oh, thank you, thank you so much, uh, Rasi, for nice introduction, uh, and then I also uh, thank uh, Dr. Sridhar for. Uh, Uh, you know, opening remark. I think uh, as I expressed, like this is my pleasure uh, to meet uh, with you today, and uh, this is my second meeting we are doing. And I think, like uh, as going forward, we are going to have a nice interaction today. Um, Dr. Sanjeev Sharma, I wish to also thank you <laughs> in terms of like you know, um, you know, always remember <laughs> in terms of uh, even, even welcoming and uh, sharing. So today I'm going to talk something a bit different, um, uh, you know, in terms of like how we are making some uh, organic and organic hybrid material and uh, um, how this is going to be applicable in terms of the wastewater research. um so i think uh, rasi uh, again i want to want to thank you because usually nobody you know reads uh, the whole <laughs> biography but you have read all of them <laughs> okay and that sometimes feel like you know you are <laughs> getting too old <laughs> all right so with that note let me just start my presentation um i have to just check like whether all the participant and everybody can see my slides uh the full picture i just want to yes sir yes it is visible so it's in the full uh, slide share mode sir right um i don't know whether anybody can control the video so that it can be you know off because my screen is just flat now at this moment uh do you have a control rasi yes sir 
Yeah, so can you uh, switch off uh, most of the video so that it can go very nicely? Okay, so today so I'm so going to talk, um, I'm talking about the application of organic and organic hybrid material. Um, obviously, like uh, if you if you try to see, like I come from South Africa, which is the, uh, the southern past, uh, part of the Africa. And um, in terms of the population, we are close to 59 million at this moment. And even with the COVID, we have uh, we have done quite well because now we are we are moving quite uh, uh, you know uh, good way um, in terms of like improvement. So we were in the lockdown um, in the five, which was like the extreme one, but now we are in lockdown one. Even the death rate and other things is quite you know improved. So uh, I think we did quite well in the, in that sense. And obviously, like. Uh, uh, I we actually like our uh, own native country India can also do because I see the statics is also coming down. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, let let me just try to tell like I am, um, you know, staying in Johannesburg itself. Uh, so just to give you a little bit more idea about South Africa, like uh, we are 59 million people, and we have around close to uh, nine provinces, 11 official languages. Uh, the racial, um, you know, demarcation, if you have to see, like it's around 80% population is black. Uh, it's close to 8 to 9% is white and close to 8 to 9%, you can say it's, uh, it's Asian, which means like Indian, Chinese, Pakistani, Bangladeshi, everybody, uh, you, you can try to count there. Um, so out of nine provinces, like I am uh, based in Johannesburg, which is uh, Gauteng province, and there is two big city you might be uh, knowing, which is uh, uh, Pretoria and Johannesburg. Uh, so uh, if we, if I have to elaborate a little bit on the Johannesburg itself, like Johannes means gold and Berg means mine. So it's gold mine. So every hundred meter, if you have to walk around, you can see, and uh, you can see the live picture of uh, you know Johannesburg in the night. How does it look like? Um, and then um, uh, the campus, the main campus, you can see for, uh, this is the main campus looking like, but we have around close to 77 uh, campuses on um, in total, um, but that is not within uh, only in South Africa, but also, um, you know, other side. Um, so as I explained, it will like, uh, you, can, you can see, this is a place of gold, uh, platinum mines, you can see, and then city is also known as like nickname Joji or city of lights. That's how it goes. But uh, the here, the whole idea comes like how we can be very responsive uh, in terms of nanotechnology, because uh, I'll go through a little bit more details in terms of like how, uh, you know, the nanotechnology was coming together um, in the beginning. But uh, if we have to see right here in terms of responsible nanotechnology, I have to play this. Uh, I think most of you have seen this movie called Spider-Man, but uh, many of you are may not be aware like this uh, uh, spider feet is made up of nanoscale fiber. So uh, those things uh, should also, um, you know, uh, comes to our uh, daily routine in terms of research, actually like, uh, although we are looking for the use of nanotechnology, but uh, uh, how we can be respons uh, responsive in terms of the toxicity. So um, with the phrase, it goes itself like with the great power uh, comes greater responsibility. So obviously like our responsibility lies uh, more in terms of like how, uh, you know, safer way we can, we can try to use. Uh, but if you have to talk about this nanoscience and technolo uh, nanotechnology, and if you go to the Google search, it's uh, more than a million hits immediately comes and uh, there is a lot of bigger terminology is also, you know, coming there. I'm not going to go those kind of, you know, uh, you know, more details, but uh, what we are looking actually like um, on the government and the industry, um, like uh, how the, the, the millions of dollar in the nanotechnology is getting invested. Um, and uh, those things is how, you know, going to be more uh, beneficial. So is this the next IT which we are looking at a huge salary? Um, obviously, um, you know, that is a matter of thought uh, one can think. Or can it stop aging and cure uh, cancer? Or can it get me safe water? 
uh, is nanotechnology factual or a figment of imagination? So obviously like uh, these kind of questions uh, we need to think and uh, some of the solutions lies within. Um, we have certain solution if we have to talk about like, can I get uh, uh, me safe water. Obviously, if you see your own house, you have the RO system that is one of the, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the discovery coming from the nanotechnological help, the filters and the membranes, how people are trying to use. Um, but again, as I told, like how we are going to go towards the responsive nanotechnology, uh, that goes like, is this nanote nanotechnology is risky? Um, so that is uh, that is a bigger question. So we have to we need to separate uh, what is fact fiction uh, are between hype and hope. So those kind of you know questions I I I, I bring to all the researchers how we are going to go towards this uh, nanoscience nanotechnology. Uh, but in terms of like coming for the water uh, disinfection, if you have to see. Uh, there is a variety of metals, uh, if you see like the silver, copper, zinc, titanium, cobalt. So there is a, a new type, type of di dynamic materials is being exposed. Uh, and then what they are trying to do actually, you know, they are having uh, different kind of groups. Uh, they do try to interact with each other. And that's how, uh, you know, like in terms of the water disinfection, it goes there. So I'm not going to go more details, but uh, I just wanted to little bit highlight on that side so that uh, you are a little bit aware of what I'm trying to talk about. But let us talk about today certain, certain things but I'll, before I go to the hybrid material. Uh, you know, like a, a kind of composite material, which is a material of 21st century. Um, so in nutshell, what, what is the composite material, which is just nothing, it's just like composed of two or more uh, different constituents. And if you have to separate in different uh, segments, what you can say like um, it's a hybrid material, metal alloy, and nano composite or macro composites. Uh, and you can you can easily see from the diameter how you can play around in terms of making the hybrid material or nano composite material or the micro composite material. So um, the whole idea is like if we try to engineer the material, that's how the whole application or the properties uh, used to change. So uh, why we are looking this? Um, why we are looking this kind of composite material or hybrid material? So um, we are looking, the goal is to create material with specific combination of properties uh, by combining different molecular building blocks in various ratios and by controlling their mutual arrangement. Why? Because we are, we are controlling at the nano level. And um, if we can control, we can have a you know, larger surface area. Um, and then we can try to uh, see the application what we are looking. And I'll be a little bit more focused on like how we are uh, going towards the wastewater you know, treatment uh, later on in the scale. But if you have to see between the composite material and the hybrid material, and if you have to go like uh, how we can compound, and that's how you can control between the macroscopic phase um, and the nano scale building blocks. And those things are quite important in terms of like how you have to control uh, at the nano level. So with that note, let me just uh, bring to your attention today that uh, um, whether it was existing in nature, obviously it is. And uh, these are the, you know, um, you know, this slide is basically like uh, quite, uh, uh, you know, um, important just to see for you like, you know, unstackable. I don't know, many of you are knowing, but there is a paper published in Nature itself in 1904, uh, where they were trying to, you know, um, you know, bring this kind of, you know, um, you know, uh, the, the structure, what, what, what is coming like uh, as a natural form of this organic and organic hybrid materials. Um, and then um, if we have to go for the more application point of view, um, then you can see like um, this is going towards like a packaging material. Uh, obviously, you have to tailor the the, 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 the the property, which is like a gas permeability. Um, it goes via the polymer and silica itself. Um, and I think uh, there is a lot of uh, processes involved. So um, as we go, we can try to see like what else we are covering uh, 
uh, today, but uh, just a little bit example how we are trying to go if you have to make some optical materials. Now, a days if you have to go to like little bit more uh, expensive hotels, you can try to see. And even the cars, you can see like, uh, you know, this kind of optically, uh, you know, sensible glasses is, is, is available. And then um, we are having like the optical polymers with uh, extraordinary mechanical properties. Obviously, we are engineering between the 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 the, uh, the, 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 the nanoparticle itself, whether it is a silica, titania, almonar, uh, jerkenia. That's how you know uh, researchers across the world they are trying to make it. But in terms of like uh, polymers for decorative application, nowadays you, you can see like most of the uh, good houses, people are putting this kind of, you know, um, you know, hybrid material as a, as a decorative, uh, uh, you know, uh, pieces in their houses. And obviously, like it is not uh, uh, very dangerous or toxic. So and it looks quite pretty. Um, then obviously, like electrical conductive polymers. So we have a variety of uh, uh, example as we, we, we can we can try to see. Now, um, the, the, the idea is like, um, if we are looking behind this application, um, then as, as I told in the beginning, like, you know, this is the material for the 21st century. Um, what we have to see, what we, are, we are looking on this salient feature, which is uh, the characteristics of the both constituents. Um, this, is, this is like existing, naturally, which is nails, hairs, horns, skins. Um, obviously, like it is a, a tailor made material. And uh, then again, we have to play around the size. So that's how you, we, we can see the features if we, if we have in our mind, then we can, we can try to see it like uh, how, how we are going to go more further. So um, if we have to talk about uh, this, uh, this, this composite material, which is a kind of uh, hybrid material we are talking about, uh, then we are we are going to have some precursor, and uh, then um, this precursor is going to be in the form of um, molecular precursor clusters, which is like na nano building blocks. Uh, then alkyl silk substituted organic polymers. I think I'll I'll go a little bit more details on that. Then pre-formed nano structure. So those are the you know uh, precursor materials we are also working. Then. Uh, if you have to talk about the classes of sol gel hybrid material, that is like um, why we are looking more there. So uh, this is like a physically interrupt component, functionalized, inorganic network, uh, interpenetrating network, and dual network. So that is why like we are we are uh, more uh, looking there. But in terms of like uh, the challenges that issue um, in terms of the preparation, if you have to look there, we need to also find out actually like. Uh, uh, certain things, uh, what should be, um, you know, our objective. So whether it is homogeneous, so um, that is the one question we should have. Um, is it going to be a stable distribution um, in terms of like how we are going to go in, in terms of the phase separation? Um, then the interaction um, in the two components, how they are strongly interacted with each other. Um, then we have to see about the structure uh, property relation that is very, very important factors right here. Um, then we have to go around and see inclusion of functionalities. Um, obviously, like uh, how we have to do the tailoring of molecular structure to nanostructure to microstructure, and that is like uh, being, uh, you know, resonant. So the whole idea is like why we are looking this kind of tailoring because um, we are RTL this structure design and obviously like uh, all these uh, properties is quite important in terms of uh, uh, what kind of application we are looking. So if you have to see the the, 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 the approach to prepare organic uh, an organic hybrid material, um, you can you can easily see like uh, this is uh, uh, one side is like a precursor chemistry and other side if you see the building block up approach. So in, in, in terms of the precursor chemistry, if you have to see, then there is a chemical interaction change, um, properties of the precursor, then properties of final materials are different to the pre precursor. And then how we are trying to make it uh, in terms of like the sol gel, uh, the organic polymers. I'll go a little bit more details like what I'm talking, but uh, 
um, little bit on the introductory note, I thought like, uh, you know, let me just uh, share with you. So in terms of the building block approach, if you have to see, then um, uh, this is uh, looking on their molecular integrities, at least the partial one. And then properties of final material to keep similarities uh, to the precursor. And then the typical material, if you are looking like the cluster and nano particle cross-link material, and, and you can see easily about the, the polymer cyclodextrins uh, to name a few. Um, as we, we we move or we are working in that direction. So the, then the question comes like, uh, what are the techniques to prepare this kind of organic and organic hybrid material? Um, there is a lot uh, processes is there, but uh, the most uh, popular one, what we, I try to highlight today is like uh, the polymerization and polycondensation process. Um, and then there is a very uh, well known Sol gel process or the self uh, organization process. So these are the three main, um, you know, processes which is um, uh, is involved in terms of like the preparation of uh, um, organic inorganic hybrid material. Uh, but in terms of like the sol gel process, if we have to name one, like how we are going to go, um, you know, and prepare. So obviously, like uh, we 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 go with the hydrolysis and the condensation, and if you see the there is a metal uh, alkoxide, and if we hydrolyze, that's how you you can you can get your um, the, the 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 resultant material, and um, then we go further to do the condensation process where it goes uh, the 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 you know the cross links, and that's how you you go, and um, then. Uh, in terms of like the moiety, if you have to say there is some research, uh, uh, you know, moiety, and then there's some metal moiety, so you have to change actually depends uh, what kind of, you know, um, resulting material you are trying to prepare. So in terms of like if if we if we see this hydrolysis and condensation process, it goes via two ways, whether it is going to be acid catalyzed or the base catalyzed. So we try to use uh, uh, both ways um, where we are using um, the acid. Um, sometimes we are trying to use as a, um, you know, smaller uh, quantity like um, with the hydrochloric acid uh, we, we try to do. And then the base, like we are trying to use the methanols and others. Um, based on uh, with the with the precursor material. So obviously, if you have to say with the acid catalyzed, what is what is happening? Is there like yield primarily linear or randomly branched polymers? So what we you are looking um, those kind of things you need to see actually whether you have to go with the acid uh, catalysis process or the base uh, uh, catalyzed process, which is like uh, yield highly branched clusters. Um, so those things is 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 quite important to uh, to all of us in terms of understanding like uh, what what uh, kind of you know materials we are we are trying to uh, to make it. Um, then in terms of like um, if you have to go for more understanding because we know now like what is hydrolysis, what is condensation, and then uh, what are the acid catalysis process, what are the base catalyte process, then it, it comes right there like in you know, uh, how the whole process is, is happening in terms of the final product uh, using the sol gel process. So we have the sol processes, uh, the sol, uh, it, you know, why are the with with the esterification? You can say like we are we are we are making some gel, and those uh, gel it can go to the supercritical uh, extraction or the solvent evaporation. Then it goes to the zero gel or aerogel, and after drying you can get get uh, get the dense glass. Um, obviously, if you are going to the sol processes, you have the sol fibers. Um, then with the sol you can get the powder. Um, I'll, I'll tell a uh, little bit more details as we go with our research, like how we are trying to make it there. Um, then uh, with the sol, you can go with the zero gel film. Um, and then by the heat treatment process, you can get the dense ceramic film. Um, and uh, you can you can easily see from this slide, like, like uh, in terms of uh, preparation, this is this is quite important because all these things is going to, you know, directly affect uh, in terms of the whole uh, properties of the resulting material. And uh, obviously that affects the, directly to the, um, uh, to the application of the material.
So now, if we have to talk about the polymer blending technique for the combination of sol gel derived inorganic nanomaterial with organic polymer to prepare organic inorganic hybrid, it is quite important um, to understand actually like uh, when we talk about the organic and inorganic, and that's how uh, the, the sandwich compound is going to be the hybrid material. Uh, so, um, why we are looking that one, that, 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 that is quite uh, important. Um, so, I'll go a little bit uh, more details on that, like how we are going to look or why we are making that way. But in terms of the, 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 the understanding, you can, you can see like if there is a polymer and there is some silicate layer and that's how you can, you can try to form. And these are the, 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 the work, what I am trying to say is like already uh, published and you can, you can easily access in, in terms of the, um, in, in the market, uh, the research um, uh, domain as well. Okay. Uh, so, um, if we have to uh, see many other examples, we, we can try to uh, we can try to find it out. Um, like what are the uh, polymer blend techniques, or um, how this solid process wo works in terms of making different or new kind of hybrid materials, right? So why I was taking all these stories together because I just wanted to tell you like what we are making. Uh, um, using this um, organic and organic hybrid material to make silicon carbide. So that was the whole objective behind today's uh, you know, talk. Um, and that's what I was trying to introduce the whole uh, scenario and the processes involved so that uh, you will be more aware if you like, there is a lot of things, uh, but uh, why we are more focused on that side. So obviously like if you have to talk about the silicon carbide, then the discovery happened in 1893 by Dr. F.H. Moisan. Um, naturally found first, it's Kenyan Diabolo Mutualic Arizona, USA. So that's how it is there. And if you have to say natural occurrence, then there is a Moissanite, rare earth uh, minerals, uh, meteorite, uh, um, then corundum deposit and uh, kimberlite. So these are the way it goes. And obviously if you have to see some of the structure, right there you can you can see the silicon carbide is also known as a carbo random um, and it is compound of silicon and carbon and the chemical formula is sic and it occurs in nature as the extremely rare mineral moissanite so uh, this is this is quite important to understand before we go like why we are making and obviously like uh, this is existing in around 250 crystal, crystalline form. And the poly polymorphism of silicon carbide is, um, is characterized by large family of similar crystalline structure called polytypes. So there is a variety of polytypes of silicon carbide is available, um, but we, we, we try to focus actually um, in two of them, but one is more dominant one, which is, so we'll go a little bit more on that. So why we are looking on this silicon um, you know, carbide polytypes, and then if you have to go on the salient features, you can see the silicon carbide occurs in different crystal structure called polytype. And the polytype is nothing is different is taking sequence of silicon carbide bilayers. All silicon carbide uh, polytypes chemically consist of 50% of carbon atoms, covalently bonded with 50% of silicon atoms. And the common polytypes, you can see 3CSIC, 4HSIC, 6HSIC, um, and then obviously like it is the electrical device properties are uh, non-isotropic with respect of crystal orientation, lattice side, and surface polarity. So those are the you know things which is which is very important. But in terms of like uh, the polymorphism, uh, what um, I just now say for understanding, you can see like this is a uh, similar uh, crystalline structure, identical in two dimension, but differ in third form. So this layer of silicon carbide is stack in unique sequence. Number of polytypes, as I told you, like it's around 250. And the common occurrences of polymorphs is alpha silicon carbide or beta silicon carbide. Uh, obviously, like um, in terms of uh, the alpha silicon carbide, you can see it's, it's like if you have the temperature around um, greater than 1700, um, it's, it's around like hexagonal crystal structure. 
uh, then if you have to talk about the beta silicon carbide which is less than uh, 1700 um, you know temperature and then uh, it is like a zinc planed or cubic structure so um, these are uh, you know two is most uh, abundant uh, polymorphs which is commonly occurring and we are more focused on the beta silicon carbide in terms of preparation so why we are making the silicon carbide if you have to see there so um, then if you have to see the commercial uh, you know application and those commercial application is 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 coming uh, towards like resistance to abrasion heat and oxidation obviously uh, we are from uh, like uh, we are interacting today and you are from mechanical engineering so you can you can try to understand more you know deeper way that side and then obviously like if you have to look about the wide energy gap uh, this is the this is the range of around microwave so that is also quite important uh, you know and then if you have to see like the high temperature resistance that's how it is it is highly uh, applied um, then rigidity lightweight corrosion resistance and obviously like nowadays people are looking on the biocompatibility so i'll, I'll go a little bit more uh, details on that if you like uh, what are our approach in terms of uh, uh, putting like how we are making and uh, um, you know uh, uh, what are what are the way forward we are we, we we are looking this kind of materials. So in terms of preparation, what we are trying to do is like we are we are taking some precursor material um, of uh, silicosol, and I think uh, uh, no need to go more detail because I have already spoken um, in the beginning actually like uh, what are the precursor. Um, you know, and what are the types, how does it work out, why we are looking that one, how they can make building blocks. How, uh, so there is a lot of things I have already spoken. But here, the two kind of precursor, uh, we are looking for the silica, which is um, MTES or TUS. So MTES is methyl triethoxysilane and TUS is tetraethoxysilane. So these are the two uh, most uh, abundant uh, precursor of silica we are trying to make and the whole objective like we are trying to make a polysilane. So the, uh, the, 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 the reason behind making polysilane because we are, we are, we, we are looking the inorganic component in terms of the uh, nanoparticle in terms of the sol form. And uh, those sol form, if I have to go back a little bit uh, um, here you can you can try to see like you know uh, those sol form it, it can it can it can go right here in terms of the powder um, uh, sometimes you have to do the calcination I have not covered today in that uh, talk actually like how we are calcining and where we are trying to use it in that way um, then obviously like you can make a film or you in the same uh, sol form you can try to you know make it uh, um, you know your your hybrid material and that's how you can uh, go more further. So that is way actually we are we are trying to make using these two precursor material and making some polysilane. And obviously, like if you have to understand the more uh, deeper on the methodology, like uh, how we are making this organic uh, inorganic hybrid material, then you can see like uh, the, the the first source we are taking is like uh, polymer and the polysilane. Now you have the understanding right here. Like uh, uh, these are the polysilane. Uh, we have prepared using this uh, uh, the precursor. Obviously, like this precursor goes via these two processes called hydrolysis and polycondensation. So uh, once we have the polymer and the polysilanine, which is a form of organic and organic hybrid material, then we have to go uh, for the uh, the carbothermal reduction. And those carbothermal reduction, which is a, a, a terminology called pyrolysis, um, it is between 1200 to 1400. And it, this is based on the li literature as well. And we have also, you know, uh, synthesized and, you know, so we, we have prepared that, uh, you know, material and we have already published. So if you have more interest in you can, you can try to see, um, you know, more details on those papers and then you can further interact. So obviously like with this carbothermal reduction on the pyrolysis process, um, what we are trying to do, like um, you can see from here, like the, the, the polymer is coming in the form of carbon right here and uh, which is a organic uh, uh, material. And then this is a polysilane is coming in the form of 
uh, silica. So these uh, two things is like inorganic and then the organic, and that's how we are we are making this silicon carbide using this carbothermal reduction, which is called called as a pyrolysis. Then obviously you need a furnace for that, and um, you need to also have the inert atmosphere for that one. So those are the processes we try to you know uh, bring it together. So obviously there is there if when you we try to generate the silicon carbide, um, then the amorphous car, uh, carbon and the unreacted silica also goes together. So how to remove those un amorphous carbon or unreacted silica? Obviously we have to go the oxidation process. So within the furnace, we do the oxidation process from 700 to 800 degree centigrade. And that's how we get the silicon carbide and Obviously, it is also combination of the unreacted silica because we get rid of the amorphous carbon, but still the unreacted silica is right here. And uh, then if we have to get rid of unreacted uh, silica, what we have to do, obviously we have to do the HF treatment, which is, <clears throat> which is quite a dangerous process in terms of like you have to have the platinum type of, you know, cru crucible, um, um, which is also one of the cost we need to look there. So obviously we have those kind of facilities. So, um, and even for the HF treatment, we have the, uh, the process in place, uh, how we try to, you know, engage, um, you know, this study. But the, here, the whole issue, what, uh, uh, you know, we, we are conducting the research, the whole issue, comes right uh, to us actually like it's a very poor yield and uh, the impurity is also a bigger, bigger problem. So, you know, that is the thing we are, we are trying to look because uh, uh, after generating this one and I will to tell you the source as well, like how we are, we, we are trying to generate, uh, um, you know, different kind of silicon carbide material using different kind of uh, uh, the source of carbon. Uh, which is quite enthusiastic in terms of uh, carry out the re research in 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 the past as well as in the future. Um, but obviously, like we 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 are working uh, more on like how we can go uh, more uh, yield of the material or how we can remove the impurity of the material. So one of the sources actually like uh, coming right here. I'm so happy that uh, we are talking, you know, to MIT University because uh, the, the the first project which we like it was done in India when I was I think it's around close to 20 years, you know, from from now you can you can you can see. So we had a project from Ministry of Environment and Forest where we wanted to remove the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon from coal tar pitch. And obviously, like we 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 were using those two standard techniques, which is um, the solvent extraction or the thermal. So the the, the whole idea is like um, uh, once we 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 have the heat treated one, or we we have done the solvent extraction process, um, then. Uh, uh, the, the 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 material is almost like useless after that what we are going to do so uh, then we try to do the carbonization process and that's how we try to understand it you like uh, um, you know how much carbon is there and whether it can be uh, formed so um, so after that removal of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbon and the namely it was benzoapyrene what we were dealing there so obviously like when we removed it so um, we go to this kind of uh, process of solgel process to make the polysilane and then we have this uh, uh, the carbon source coming from the coal tar pitch and that's how we make this silicon carbide. So obviously you can see that is uh, uh, the, 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 the waste material which is like uh, um, in the form of the processes it happen uh, but uh, later on actually like uh, we try to uh, make use but again the problem what we discovered, what I have just shown you from the last slide, actually, like uh, um, that is um, the poor yield and uh, in terms of the impurity was also a, a, a bigger issue. So the, um, uh, that is that is a very good way of seeing. But if you see the second, uh, you know, picture, which is this one, uh, here, uh, if we, if you go to the previous slide, like we 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 talk about the source of carbon is the the polymer. 
and uh, here we, we took the polycarbonate and you can easily see the pictures It's quite nice quite amazing even the uniformity you can always you know uh, try to see that way so that was also quite uh, good um, and it was it took also very less time in terms of the production or uh, you know uh, the publication but uh, uh, nevertheless uh, what i wanted to say is uh, more on your side actually like um, um, the third aspect what we try to cover the, 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 the third aspect what we try to, uh, to cover it you like uh, we try to take uh, the source of carbon from the waste and i think uh, most of you are aware it you like you know you are writing uh, nowadays very nicely on the paper and um, and you are quite uh, you know good there but uh, just to make the paper process if you go to the industry you you will be quite amazed to see it like how they are making we have, but obviously like with the pulp and paper mill industry they 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 try to have a lot of uh, you know lignin right there and um, uh, obviously like coming um, from the black liquor so the, the the whole idea is like from the lignin there is a lot of carbon you know uh, present right side um, there obviously there can be <clears throat> sorry uh, more challenges on that but what we did actually like we we took uh, the the the, the uh, we went to the pulp and paper mill, mill industry and we 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 extracted the lignin out of there and uh, obviously like we took the source of uh, uh, this the, the inorganic material which is uh, um, the polysilane in terms of uh, the precursor what i mentioned uh, both MTUS and TUS, um, and then uh, we have done the carbothermal reduction. I can a little bit go back to just to show you like uh, this is the whole processes. So in terms of the, the polymer, here is the source is coming from the lignin, which is um, coming from the pulp and paper in the mill industry. And then the polysilane is coming in terms of like these two material, what I, I talk about, like whether it is MTUS or TUS, and uh, that's how we make together and finally we we get to this compound called uh, silicon carbide so um, that's how we did but uh, but again if you if you see the whole picture right there um, you can see with those processes it is like a little bit lumpy if if you see there um, and uh, there was a lot of nodes we have we had discovered so we were trying to find out like whether they can be joint so that we can we can combine the, the, the making some uh, you know you know um, you know uh, like linking those uh, uh, things together but obviously like the size was quite uh, interesting in terms of the length of the, the, the fiber you can also see from this uh, you know uh, the TEM transmission electron microscope photograph. Um, and then um, the second one is like with the craft lignin. So we, we buy from the market, which was, and you can see, but there is both, uh, both pictures are quite different. This is from the uh, straight away from the pulp and paper industry. And this is from the craft lignin. And these are just uh, HRSM images that we have tried to put it there. And obviously, like this research has been also published. So, if you want to have more details, you can we can we can uh, you know you know see there. And if if you see like uh, this uh, this whole whole bunches, if we have to go more um, you know details on that, and then that's how we try to conduct this uh, the HR uh, TEM, which is high resolution transmission electron uh, microscope. And this is only for the paralyzed sample, like I, 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 I wanted to say uh, today with you. And you can see like, this is looking like a bamboos. So the moment we try to, you know, discover this one and, uh, and the, the, the guy who was doing the TEM, he was quite happy. And I think uh, I remember like quite a few months, he just put it there. He's a very uh, well-known researcher, but he put it in his uh, uh, screen saver so that, uh, you know, he can show to the people like from the waste, what you can generate and it is quite nice so so what was happening right there like um what i was trying to you know say with you like how you can generate some 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 junctions and that is you can see we 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 try to generate the y junction which is like uh, in terms of joint we have done and those uh, like if you have to say the the the, the, the crystal structure how it is uh, you know looking around so um, that was and then we also concluded like it is going in the form of like you know uh, beta silicon carbide. Obviously, like there is uh, uh, different uh, terminologies, there are the techniques you can try to, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, 
confirm with that way. So, um, and you can see like if you have to go like a more internal morphology analysis and uh, then you can, you can, you can easily see it way like, um, um, you know, like uh, how the crystallographic uh, data is looking like in this one. And um, the important thing behind this, if you try to recall, and I go a little bit more further to understand like what is here. If you if you see this 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 picture right here, and it is looking like bamboos, and then what is on the sides? So those things is quite important because if we have to carry on more further, we need to know because we are looking more application, uh, more uh, yield, and the, the 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 purity of the compound. So obviously, like when we did the study, we did try to find out like these are nothing. You know those uh, the those uh, the outside border is it is nothing. It's just like it's it's a silica. And uh, then the inside is uh, is, the, is the silicon carbide. So um, then what we have done actually like that's how we we conducted the uh, the HF treatment and that's how we we get the pure silicon carbide. Okay, and you can you can easily see from this uh, you know graphics very well. So then comes the question comes again to, you know together like how you know like this is a beta or the alpha. So obviously like we have to conduct the Raman and the FTIR and you can see like the the, the peak at eight o five and that is also supported by the literature that this is a beta beta silicon carbide and obviously four seventy five it is showing silicon O uh, oxygen silicon you know unreacted silica. And then if you have to talk about the 1100, that is OSIO unreacted silica. So those are the, you know, quite important things what, uh, uh, you know, I wanted to say. But what is linking to this kind of organic and organic hybrid material what we have prepared, um, it's, 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 it's quite important because you, if you have this, this material right there, which is uh, the, the, the together with the silicon carbide and the silica, you know, um, right uh, there, then obviously like you can, you can functionalize and you can attach with the DNA, um, you know, so that is one of the application you are looking. Uh, the metal complexes, it can be formed actually, so that can be another way of looking, uh, you know, uh, the application, obviously you can Im immobilize the enzymes uh, and the quantum dots. So these are the uh, four uh, uh, we thought about, but now we are moving more further like with the fisotropes, uh, you know, way and that, that is some ongoing project where we are trying to make use of this silicon carbide as a catalyst material. And then obviously like it can go for the, you know, uh, you know, synthesis of some ethanol or methanol uh, production, but that is a different group, you know, trying to do. But uh, the whole idea behind us, like uh, from the waste, we can we can try to make this silicon carbide, and after that, um, it can be functionalized as a better catalyst, and that's how it can go more further. So um, I have to, you know, a little bit to go on concluding side now. Uh, so I have to tell you, like, you know. Uh, these are only few uh, books uh, I have uh, highlighted today, like uh, which is uh, uh, which is uh, having more on the soil gel uh, way. Uh, if you are if you are looking like the soil gel nano ceramic material or the carbon based material, or they are looking for the inorganic oxide material. So and the smart ceramics. So those kind of you know um, you know this is also in the Google. So I have around uh, more than uh, I think. Uh, uh, you have highlighted there, but uh, uh, these are the one actually I only highlighted so for this lecture so that um, if you are interested, you can you can have more uh, you know studies there and that will help. Um, so I wish to acknowledge um, uh, my team, which is all over the world actually, and I wish like uh, you know peoples will be also from your university coming together, working together, and that's how I believe uh, because my belief is an open mind and nurture scientific thinking, and that's how we can go. So these are the team members, and uh, there is, this is a very perfect example of organic and organic live material. These are my two daughters. Uh, my wife comes from the organic background, and I am from the inorganic backgrounds, and these are the uh, two hybrid live material I can show with you. Uh, so my teams are also there, my partner from Russia, from Canada, from, from the UK, uh, so all are, you know, coming right there. And uh, that's how I want to conclude saying that knowledge has only beginning and no end. Thank you.
Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for sharing your work, your experience in the field of the research and knowledge with us. I, I can assure you that we have gotten benefited by this. Talking about uh, materials of the 21st century, their characteristics and applying them and showing the pictures at such a basic micro level is really uh, quite beneficial. Uh, thank you, sir, once again. And uh, now I would like to request uh, Mr. Om Prakash, sir, Faculty Mechanical Engineering Department, to kindly ask questions on behalf of the attendees, participants, if any, sir. Over to you, Om Prakash, sir. Om Prakash, unmute, unmute yourself. Now am I audible, sir? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes. Uh, thank you very much yes, sir, yes. for a wonderful talk on application of organic and organic hybrid materials. Now we have some questions from our participants. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, so the question is, as there are different polytypes of silicon carbide like 2H, 4H, 6H, etc., which is best for refractory grade and why? Um, to be very honest, you know, like, um, what we are we are trying to you know make uh, use of this uh, the waste um, you know source um, in terms of carbon so uh, what we 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 are making it like uh, the use of uh, uh, you know this uh, whether it is coming from the croft lignin whether it is coming from the coal tar pits uh, so obviously like uh, that depends actually availability of how much carbon is present right there and um, once it is there, um, then uh, we, we need to also establish in terms of like whether uh, uh, it can be, you know, so those kind of uh, things we need to see actually what are the applications uh, one is, uh, you know, um, you know, uh, looking for, um, then we, we can try to explore and, uh, you know, reveal that way. Okay, sir. Uh, next question is, sir. Uh, mm -hmm. What are the application of silicon carbide in medical science? Um, you see, there is a lot uh, nowadays because if you just Google it, I no need to name and all, all, all of them. Um, you know, so if you have to talk about the dental brasses or, you know, so there is there is a lot of, uh, you know, application is coming, but we, we are not more focused on that side. But obviously, there, that is one of the application you are, you, are, uh, you know, you know, you are looking. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, next question is how silicon and carbon bilayer are getting stabilized in carbon structure? Um, I think I did uh, try to see when I was trying to tell about the, the the history itself, you know, how the silicon carbide, what are the structure, how it is formed actually. So that is, it is quite, you know, interactive. And then um, once you do this uh, pyrolysis process at around 1400, uh, around 12, 1200 to 1400, that is the literature all, uh, itself shows. Uh, that's how you, 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 you make that uh, silicon carbide. And obviously like uh, for that confirmation you need to you know do and the simple way to confirm is like the FTIR and I think uh, during my last two three slide I did uh, try to you know say it like this is the way you confirm whether it is a beta form whether it is alpha form and yes. uh, that's how it you can you can try to confirm and uh, later on like when you have to do like uh, with the with the with the morphological structure especially with the SEM which is scanning electron or the transmission electron microscope and that's how you can further confirm. Okay sir. Mm -hmm. uh, next question is sir what is the impact of nanomaterial on sustainability in terms of environment economical and social? Um, you see nowadays, uh, if if we walk uh, walking in the with the market, you know, so we can, we can see a lot of stuff coming from uh, the nanomaterial itself, um, especially the cosmetics. You know, like I think there is a lot of product is available right there. Now people are also using some smart dresses they are making with the fabrics, uh, using this um, you know smart polymers actually. So that's how they are trying to make it. But the the the, the idea, if we have to see, uh, we need to be also 
be careful in terms of like the toxicological effect because once we employ there we need to also see uh, whether it is leaching and then again like one of the aspect of the research what we try to do to 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 clean the water so if we try to employ there obviously if it leached out and the 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 the, the toxicological test itself shows some uh, some 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 uh, harness to your uh, to what it, that is that is that is uh, b- very big challenges and uh, also uh, end of the day it also affect to the environment and the the biggest challenge is what we are trying to uh, face with the polymers itself if we, if you see like there is a lot of uh, debates is going around and we can we can we can see it like uh, uh, how to come up and now this pandemic things with the covid you can see like a lot of polymers is being used actually you know the plastic they are you know using by the mask and the, the protective uh, way actually so uh, that is way but we are also trying to be more uh, eco friendly in terms of uh, looking um, the aspect actually like how we can try to be more eco friendly and public safety way uh, by utilization of certain kind of this nanomaterials Okay, so uh, mm-hmm. next question is, uh, what type of linkage will develop between silicate and nylon in hybrid materials? Um, I have not seen that one with the, with the, we have not done with the nylon actually, but uh, uh, obviously like uh, it, it goes with in terms of the preparation, you know, um, because uh, if you are if you if you want to make the the silicon carbide uh, then you need to also look at your like what you want to prepare what you want to uh, make the final resulting material which is going to be alpha silicon carbide beta silicon carbide which is the most uh, abundant form of uh, uh, the silicon carbide itself so depends like what you are looking for okay, sir. Uh, sir next question is uh, how to make small silica nanoparticle with large pores? I think uh, I did cover there and I think I wanted to avoid this question, but it's fine. Uh, that is why I did uh, try to cover like when we were trying to show the so whole soil gel process, you know, um, because during that soil gel process, you can try to see like how you can create a gel or how you can create the powder. So those uh, powder form, if you have to do the calcination, you know, once you 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 make your uh, material like, you know, your precursor material, and then you have uh, gone through the soil gel process. And after the soil gel process, uh, then you have to dry it. Uh, then you calcine the whole material. And once you can sign, then you need to look actually what are the sizes you can. Uh, we we try to go like around close to 4 to 50 nanometer size as actually that is the way we try to prepare and even after the calcination we try to do. Uh, but obviously like if you are looking for the larger scale that is the way actually like you need to you need to also plan actually how we have to go more further on that side. Uh, okay sir and how we can improve the errors in hybrid materials? Uh, sorry, I didn't get you this question. Uh, how we can improve the errors in hybrid materials? What is errors? Errors, errors, sir. I, I didn't understand that one. How we can improve the errors in hybrid oh, materials? Oh, errors. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, yes. now I get it. Huh? Yeah. Um, you see, I, when I was trying to you know, say it and uh, even to you know highlight a little bit there, uh, I, I try to, in like in our whole group, this is not only my research, this is the whole research group in, involved, uh, where you can try to see like once you are using the pure polymer itself, and I show you the example of polycarbonates. Uh, there you can see like you know it's a, it's a very nice nice structure homogeneous and the size is uniform so that's how you can see but if when you to, uh, take the waste source which is like a uh, coal tar page or whether you took the lignin or the craft lignin you have you have seen actually a lot of uh, you know you know problems we have uh, we have generated so uh, to remove those kind of obstacle we are still working on it actually like how we have to go um, you know purify uh, then obviously like uh, in terms of like the purification you need to see with the uh, the hf treatment what i have seen the impurity you know i have seen so you there right there so once you do the hf treatment obviously you can impure uh, you can 
uh, remove the unreacted silica from there and even the silica which is present uh, in the silicon carbide itself so you know that is the one way to go but obviously like uh, your your target is also uh, there in terms of um, how you can improve the yield because you are looking for if you are looking for the catalyst for the bigger uh, uh, production then obviously you need more more uh, you know amount so you know that is the one actually we are looking uh, around at this moment okay thank you sir uh, that's all from my side sir and thank you very much sir for giving time for questions and answer sessions uh, now over uh, over now over to you rashi ma'am uh, thank you op sir and uh, thank you ajay sir for explaining all these questions so elaborately thank you once again uh, now i would like to uh, request uh, dr sanjeev sharma hod mechanical engineering department to kindly give the vote of thanks sanjeev sir yeah. first of all uh, i would like to very very thankful to uh, ajay sir on behalf of mechanical engineering department of mechanical engineering i would like to very thankful to you sir for your uh, for your informative and the knowledge will talk uh, you are very well defined about the 21st century material system in this uh, you have to uh, in this you have to talk about the, how the organic and inorganic material can we can uh, develop in this uh, actually you are also talked about the hybrid hybrid material composite material nano structured material and the material alloys however you are also talk about the packaging material and this particular mechanical material is a very good example of polymer as well as sio2 means this is the organic material no organic material you are also talking about the tech the tech we have to use In the, in the in the industrial application because of these are having very good properties like it is it is having a hardness property a good hard a good oxidation property heat resistance for good property all these combined together and give, we will give we, uh, it will give a very good uh, uh, wonderful uh, i mean to material system so uh, i am very thankful to you sir that you are delivering this particular talk first of all uh, my i have to extend my thanks to honorable Uh, founder president sir uh, uh, doctor, doctor uh, ashok ke johan sir and the chancellor sir uh, sim johan sir uh, he 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 provide regular uh, uh, platforms uh, to perform it as well as uh, i am very thankful to sir our uh, our uh, vc sir uh, professor pv sharma sir and the pro vice chairman ma'am they they will provide us a uh, 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 for that one and uh, we are very all really very thankful to our team and team leader professor uh, dr sridhar uh, uh, sir he will give, give us a very good platform and to deliver this particular and i will, i am also thankful to our all department members like uh, om prakash sir and uh, rasi rasi madam uh, she will coordinate very good so in this way, in this uh, all these uh, in this way i i am very thankful to you sir thank you very much you all uh, thank you dr rajay mishra sir and thank you the entire team thank you all thank you so much bye thank you so much it's i really thank appreciate you. all your support and all the kind words thank you so much thank you sir thank you namaste